Now, English cricket history will be made at Edgbaston tomorrow when the first day-night test match played in this country gets underway. England taking on the West Indies, of course, under the lights. And Nick Clitheroe is there for us now. Nick, I'm not the only one that's very excited about this. It's a great time for cricket, isn't it? Absolutely, Mary. 73,000 tickets already sold. And, you know, England will be the odds-on favourites to win this three-test series. But the West Indies have got a good record here at Edgebaston. They've won four out of the last five test matches on this ground. If only they could roll back the years and call out the likes of Viv Richards and Curtly Ambrose. Well, they're both in Birmingham this week, and Ian Winter has been to meet them. Four nights in one day, Sir Viv Richards, Sir Andy Roberts, Sir Kirtley Ambrose and Sir Richie Richardson. A quartet of top quality cricketers from the West Indies and a dream come true for Farhan Sayed, the 12-year-old from Dudley, who couldn't quite believe he was having a selfie with one of the world's finest ever batsmen. One of the greatest moments of my life. I've actually never experienced that someone has come from West Indies. I'm never going to forget this memory. It was back in 1984 that Viv Richards scored a century at Edgbaston to help the West Indies crush England by an innings and 180 runs. Today, 33 years later, the balance of power looks very different. The West Indies may be 50 to 1 outsiders to win the three match series, but they've always enjoyed coming to Birmingham. In the last five test matches at Edgbaston, they've won four, they've drawn one, they've lost none. Let's hope that uh, the Windies can catch England out. If they do, I think that would be a great start for them. Are you a big fan of day-night test cricket? I wasn't quite impressed when I was in Dubai when West Indies uh, took on Pakistan. I think the ball had a lot to do with it in terms of uh, how soft it got. So let's wait and see. Fast bowler Kirtley Ambrose also has fond memories of playing test cricket at Edgbaston. In 1995, he dismissed the England captain Michael Atherton with the third ball of the match. This afternoon, he joined his fellow Antiguans in Birmingham to support Wickets, a Lord's Taverners project that uses cricket to improve the quality of life for children in deprived areas. So what does it mean to these children when four cricketing legends turn up? Yeah, I think it really, it really brings the whole thing to life. The, the excitement, the anticipation waiting for the guys to arrive today was tangible, and they're having great fun out there. England are the favourites going to the tournament, but I'm a firm believer that both teams has to start from zero. So you never know what could happen. They say cricket is a game of glorious uncertainties. And you never know. I mean, if England take the West Indies for granted, they could be in for a shock. The four nights have travelled 4,000 miles from Antigua to Birmingham, and it's a journey much appreciated by the children who share their passion for cricket. Ian Winter, BBC Midlands Today, Edgbaston. Well, Edgbaston already looks very different from when those greats played here, and there's more change on the way. Warwickshire have today announced an £85 million project, which will see these outdoor nets, and then the car park over here totally transformed. More than 370 new homes are going to be built, along with shops and restaurants. It'll all form a new gateway to Edgbaston, and is vital to the financial future of Warwickshire County Cricket Club. However, they do still need to get planning permission. Well, Nick, away from uh, cricket and to football now, the league season's only a couple of weeks old, but there's already pressure on one of our managers.